Tonight, Local 5 is taking a closer look at radon, and there's a high concentration of it in Iowa compared to the rest of the country. And Eva, it can have some deadly consequences. That's right. You can't see it or smell it, and it kills 400 Iowans a year. No matter your socioeconomic background or where you live, radon doesn't discriminate, and it's a chemical all homeowners should test for to protect yourself from lung cancer. And as Local 5's Ryan Scott reports, even if you live a healthy lifestyle, you can still fall victim. Maria was 62 when she received some devastating news. He said, you know, Maria, the average person with your diagnosis lives a year. And I was like, no way. <laughs> that, that's not going to that's not going to be right for me. She had stage four lung cancer. She never touched a cigarette. I'm told I have metastasis. Uh, to my brain. Once you have spread to the brain, it, you know, do not pass go. You are now stage four. Maria is no stranger to disease, and she knows how to lead a healthy lifestyle. I knew from being a nurse practitioner that rarely is a preliminary diagnosis from the pathologist different than the final. It's been 20 months since that life-changing diagnosis, but you wouldn't know it from talking to her. Why have a pity party? No one's going to come anyway. <laughs> The cause of her cancer? Maria's medical team suspects radon. I had heard of radon. What I, what shocked me, though, was how prevalent it was in Iowa. Radon is uh, very common, and um, many people don't know about it. Dr. Richard Deming is overseeing Maria's care. He's also the medical director at Mercy One Des Moines Cancer Center. She's a, a real inspiration. She's doing well. Dr. Deming says radon is the leading cause of lung cancer among non-smokers. It's a naturally occurring gas that comes from the ground and can seep into basements through cracks in the cement. Dr. Deming says lung cancer can happen with long-term exposure exposure to radon, and unless you test for it, you wouldn't know if it was making you sick. There's not an acute illness that happens because of inhaling radon. Which is why he and Maria are encouraging Iowans to test their homes for the toxic gas. There probably is no one in the United States that doesn't now know that cigarette smoking causes cancer. Um, many people are not aware that radon exists are not aware that uh, they may be inhaling it and are not aware that it causes cancer. I really try to get the word out to a lot of people. What's more, people are skeptical because of the stigma surrounding lung cancer. It's the only cancer diagnosis that you have to defend. Somebody would say to me, I didn't know you smoked. And I'm like, I never smoked. They think lung cancer and they think you brought it on yourself. Maria doesn't let it get her down. Being in healthcare, you see people who just... They just give up. They just give up. And it's like, look around. There's a lot of people who, who can't even walk. You think I'm having a bad day? You know, I mean, be, be grateful. Ryan Scott, Local 5 News. We are Iowa. Iowa is designated a Zone 1 state by the EPA. And here's a map from the EPA showing the different levels across the country. Now notice Iowa is one of the few states that is completely red, meaning at least 50% of homes have radon levels above what is considered safe. And in fact, one radon survey found out it is much worse than that. 71% of Iowa homes have high levels of radon. So why is it so prevalent here in Iowa? We turn to one of the early pioneers of radon research in Iowa for the answer. I first started doing radon research back in the 90s. I was the uh, coordinator for the Iowa Radon Lung Cancer Study. That study put Iowa on the map. Dr. Bill Field's research found Iowans exposed to high levels of radon had a higher chance of developing lung cancer. Even the World Health Organization says, wow, you know, these findings are so compelling. He then helped the WHO create guidance on radon now used around the world. And I was honored to be the person who really launched the WHO's global guidance on radon at the international radon meetings. When it comes to why radon is so prevalent in Iowa, he says the answer can be found beneath our feet. Millions of years ago during the glaciation period, rocks from Canada were pulverized and transported to Iowa by glaciers moving south, transforming our soil. We have the highest average radon concentrations in the nation. Levels in Iowa are so high, homes are not the only place you risk encountering radon. The outdoor radon concentrations in Iowa, in some areas of Iowa, especially in the Northwest, a portion of Iowa 
are equal to what we see for the national indoor average <laughs> throughout the United States. 400 Iowans die from radon exposure in homes and workplaces every year. He estimates 20 to 30 Iowans die from outdoor exposure to radon alone. While exposure is impossible to prevent outside, protecting your home is easy, but it's not required by law. We do have regulations that all daycares, licensed daycares, be tested for radon. That's you know a good first step, but we, we really have to look at schools next. The EPA estimates 70,000 schoolrooms in the U.S. have high short-term radon levels. Ryan Scott, Local 5 News, we are Iowa. Now, there is a bill in the state house that would mandate all public schools test for radon, but one of its biggest advocates didn't live to see if it would ever become law. Gail Orcutt, a lifelong teacher, was diagnosed with radon induced lung cancer in 2010. She died a decade later, just last year. Local 5's Lake and McGee shows us all she accomplished and continues to do for the cause even after her death. We got the cancer diagnosis on May 6th, which was the day before her birthday. Uh, <laughs> a little tough. Bill Orcutt still remembers how he felt the day his wife, Gail, learned she had cancer. We were devastated. I felt a shock that went from the top of my head to the base of my spine when the doctor said it's cancer. The day the Orcutts heard about Gail's diagnosis was the day they learned about radon as well. And over the next 10 years, spreading awareness about it became her life's work. And I don't care if we were standing in the line at the grocery store, if she was just talking with somebody, somewhere in that conversation, she would ask, have you tested your house for radon? Radon took one of her lungs, but not her spirit. She was a person who could make connections with anybody that she came in contact with. Uh, she was always one of those folks that was thinking of other people. Radon also took her to the state capitol, where she was a vocal advocate for testing in Iowa schools. That's when Representative Art State first met her. Gail Orcutt has, has been the one who was in the legislature for years, educating all of us. The bill is House File 243. State's been introducing it every year for nearly a decade. I picked it up. I was inspired by her. We thought we could move this bill. We've seen it come out of education several times. But it's never reached the House floor. I fully intend to make sure the bill moves. I'm going to introduce it or one like it every year until it gets passed. Gail's mission also brought national attention to the issue. He said, you have a nodule on your left lung and it's probably malignant. Lung cancer. Lung cancer. Right. In 2013, she shared her story with NBC's Today well, Show, taking them to Riverwoods in Des Moines, where she radon? taught for no. years. And I've always kind of wondered if I wasn't exposed here as well as at home. Gail's advocacy also inspired nonprofits like the Energy Association of Iowa Schools to step in where laws are falling short. I met Gail Orcutt at a Region 7 EPA radon meeting, so I really wanted to talk with her and learn from her. Julie Weishar is the executive director for for the EAIS, their mission to help schools practice environmental sustainability and protect students. That's where radon mitigation comes in. There is a connection with energy with radon. In 2015, her organization began training school staff on radon testing. We have had 53 school districts in Iowa voluntarily test 213 buildings. It's not a state requirement, but Bill says it's progress. I think all schools should be tested, particularly the first floor. Before Gail passed, the couple established the Orcutt Radon Reduction Foundation Fund. By next year, they hope to have enough money to buy radon mitigation systems for at least 10 homeowners. It's a legacy he hopes will outlive both of them. When I pass, this house will get sold and that money will go into the foundation. When Gail passed away instead of flowers in her obituary, they are asking mourners to donate to the Orca Radon Reduction Foundation Fund. Now you can find a link to this website at weareiowa.com. In the studio, I'm Lake McGee, Local 5 News, We Are Iowa. Now, a number of schools already test for radon through the EAIS, and here's a map of all of the districts that do so. That's on their website. The red pins indicate buildings and districts where they test radon through them. Now, you'll notice there's a big hole in the metro right there. There are districts that test for that there, rest assured. Here's a look at those districts now. We reached out to each district in the metro and those who responded say they do routinely test for radon. So far, the only districts we have not yet heard back from are Waukee and Norwalk. 
If you see your student's district here, you can find more information about how they test for radon on our website, weareiowa.com. And some communities have taken measures to address radon. This is a map of the cities and counties with building codes requiring builders use radon resistant construction practices. Now here in the metro, that includes Bondurant, Altoona and unincorporated areas within Polk County. Now, according to the Iowa Department of Public Health, counties in central Iowa include Adair, Green and Guthrie. In eastern Iowa, those cities include North Liberty, Coralville and Iowa City. And Iowa City is taking it a step further. Landlords are required to test all single family and duplex units for radon. If levels are higher than four PCI per liter, they're required to install a mitigation system. And Iowans living in public housing may be among the most at risk. Local 5 reached out to the city of Des Moines to find out if they test public housing properties for radon, and they said no. The city sent us this statement saying the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development does not require municipalities to test for radon in public housing. The Des Moines Municipal Housing Agency has not performed any radon testing on public housing properties to date, but they are working on plans to start testing. They say that will begin this fall and they will handle any mitigation efforts required to make sure those properties are safe. The EPA does have funding to help states raise awareness and provide radon mitigation. One of them is called the State Indoor Radon Grant. Now, the Iowa Department of Public Health says they use the funding to spread the message about radon. The other is a multi-purpose grant to states and tribes to manage and mitigate dangerous chemical substances, including radon. Now, states that apply can receive eight and a half million dollars. Now, applications were due July 9th. Now, we reached out to state officials to find out if Iowa applied and if so, if it intends to use the money for radon mitigation, we have not heard back.